If you are someone who came out of addiction and unhealthy lifestyles, was delivered and set free by God, and then turned back to those old lifestyles and addictions, you are not the first person this has happened to. This is a phenomenon known as backsliding. And in early 2021, I made a video about how God completely set me free while I was doing the Daniels fast. Now in this video, I want to tell you the honest truth and very interesting story of what happened afterwards. I'll go ahead and warn you there is a lot of information in this video but I think it's valuable information. So I hope you stay to the end and I hope this helps you if you're struggling with the same issues. So in the beginning of 2021, I was struggling with bad habits, addictions, and just an unhealthy lifestyle in general. So God told me to do the Daniels fast for 40 days. You can see the full story of what happened in that fast and what I learned from it in that video. But long story short, when I came out of that fast, I was a completely different person. God had truly set me free from my lack of self-control and self-discipline. I had never experienced a supernatural deliverance like that. So in that video, when I say God set me free, that was not a lie. That was 100% the truth. But now that I've been out of the fast for about 10 months now, I want to tell you what happened afterwards and where I went wrong. So after I finished the fast, there was a side of me that said, I'm never going back to that lifestyle. But at the same time, there was another side of me that said, well, now that I'm free from these addictions, it's okay to go back to that indulgent lifestyle of consuming whatever I want, whenever I want, because I'm not addicted to those things anymore. It's kind of like I saw what God had done as a magic pill or a one-time fix to set me straight just to go back to where I was rather than seeing what God had done as a supernatural push towards a new kind of lifestyle. So after the fast, I slowly started to tread back into the muck where God brought me out of. Imagine that. God delivers me from captivity and I go back to the cage. Why? Maybe because I was so comfortable in my place of captivity that being out of captivity was uncomfortable and disorienting. Anyway, I was right back to where I started before I did the fast. And it was at that point where I said, okay, it's hopeless, I'm hopeless. God set me free and I still made the decision to go back to the place he delivered me from. How can God still have mercy on someone like that? Those who escape the corrupting forces of this world system through the experience of knowing our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Messiah, then go back into entanglement with them, are defeated by them, becoming worse off than they were to start with. It would have been much better for them never to have experienced the way of righteousness than to know it and then turn away from the sacred obligation that was given to them. They become illustrations of the true proverb, a dog will return to its own vomit and a wash pig to its rolling in the mud. When I read that scripture, I said, yep, I'm hopeless. I basically looked at God and said, I'm sorry that you took the time to set me free. And then I went back and rendered my situation hopeless. And when I said that, I heard the Lord say, you don't know what hopeless looks like. I've seen true hopelessness. You haven't. And then he reminded me of the days of Noah and how the people in that time were wiped out in the flood because they were truly hopeless. There was no ounce of righteousness, no purity. They had truly passed the point of no return. There was no saving them. So the Lord used this concept to help me understand that if a situation is truly, truly without hope, then God is not going to continue calling out to someone with deaf ears, which is why the people in the flood suffered the fate they did, because they were truly hopeless. And so God told me that whenever I feel hopeless, to ask myself a question, are you still breathing? 
And if the answer is yes, then God is not done with you. If you're still breathing, then God is still invested in you. Peter said that we are worse off than we were before when we go back to the mud, but he didn't say that we were hopeless. The breath in our lungs is our constant reminder that God still has plans for us, regardless of how disobedient we are. Even with all this in mind though, I was still frustrated with myself for going back to the mud after God set me free. Months after I did the original fast, I would do little daily fasts here and there. And on the days I would fast, I would have more self-control on the days than I didn't. So I got frustrated and I asked God, what am I supposed to do, fast every day? After I said that, this is the response I got. Whatever it takes, it's a lifestyle, not a magic pill. And that's when I realized that I was going to have to choose what master I served on a daily basis, not just for 40 days, but for a lifetime. And I need to decide whether the temporary pleasures of this world are worth sacrificing the eternal pleasures of heaven. And you wouldn't think that would be that hard of a decision to make, but it actually can be very difficult because in modern times, the world has more pleasure than it ever has in history. Jesus warned us how difficult it was for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Because why would someone need the pleasures of the kingdom when they already have all the pleasures of the world abundantly at their fingertips? We are a generation surrounded by pleasure in any kind of form you want it in. If you crave it, it's there and you can have it. But the dangerous thing about worldly pleasure is there's always a catch and there's always an expiration date. Look at the story of Jacob and Esau, for example. Esau was starving and desperate for something to satisfy his hunger. So Jacob said, if you give me your birthright, then I'll give you something to eat. And Esau did it. Esau caved into temptation. He traded his lifelong inheritance for a bowl of soup all for the sake of satisfying the fleeting desires of the flesh. And you know what? A couple hours later, he was probably hungry again. The flesh cannot be eternally satisfied because it's not eternal. You always end up coming back for more. But at that point, the damage was already done. Jesus faced a similar kind of temptation in the desert when Satan tempted him. Satan said, I'll give you the power and pleasures of this world system if you give me the power you have in heaven. And even as hungry as Jesus was, he said, no, not today, Satan, because Jesus knew that the power and pleasures of this world are nothing compared to the power and pleasures of heaven. It's all just a flash in time. And what fool trades eternity for time? I can use these stories as examples to learn from. What is more valuable to me? this fleeting life or my eternal life? What am I willing to sacrifice for God and how far am I willing to go in my abnegation to him? Am I really willing to trade my inheritance in heaven for the temporary pleasures of this world? Is it really worth it? And I have to say no, time is not worth eternity. The world has so much pleasure to offer and it feels so good in the moment, but it is no comparison to the presence of God, which lasts forever. Things that satisfy the flesh are like drugs. Once we get a taste of it, our body gets used to it to the point where we can't go very long without it. So we fall into this place where we're coming back for it again and again and again. Before we know it, we're spending all of our time, energy, and money chasing after these desires, trying to satisfy them. We become seekers of pleasure rather than seekers of the kingdom. And so the Lord has really convicted me about being sober minded during these times and not in a constant state where I'm so drunk on pleasure and preoccupied pursuing whatever my flesh is craving 
that I'm blind spiritually to what's happening in the world. This is the time to be extremely vigilant and hypersensitive to what's happening in the spirit realm because there is a war going on right now in the spirit. And one of the tactics the enemy is using against God's children is he's trying to overstimulate us and distract us with things that don't even matter. Jesus said the thief comes in the night. So let's wake up and stay awake so we're not sleeping when the thief comes. The Lord has also been convicting me about practicing what I preach. If I'm going to tell someone about the delivering power of Christ, I need to be able to show them what it looks like. Why would the world want what I as a Christian have to offer if I look just like they do? I need to show them what the kingdom looks like. So now that I've said all that, this is where we get to the specifically interesting part of the story. After God was telling me all these things, I knew I needed to do the fast again. Except this time, don't consider it a magic pill, but a supernatural push towards a new lifestyle. A lifestyle of discipline and abstinence from overindulgence. So after I tried to fast again a couple times and then failed a couple times, I turned to God and asked him, please Lord, help me fast again. I cannot do this without you. And then a couple days later, I miraculously came down with a post COVID side effect called parosmia, which if you don't know what that is, it's a symptom that people are experiencing three to four months after they get COVID. And basically what parosmia does is it distorts your sense of smell so that things that normally taste great all of a sudden taste rotten. So almost all the food that I was finding so much pleasure in eating, all of a sudden I wasn't able to eat it anymore. Now there are a lot of people that are experiencing this, but I don't think it was a coincidence that right after I prayed for the Lord to help me fast, I came down with parosmia. Food that I was addicted to and associate pleasure with, I now associate with displeasure. And some may look at it and say, well, God is a loving God. He would never do such a thing. He would never cause suffering to his children. But remember, we're talking about the God who blinded Paul, the God who took the sense of sight from a man so that he may be able to see what he was spiritually blind to. I think we're in a similar situation now with parosmia. God is trying to pull us out of this dependence on the world and on the flesh to bring us pleasure and to help us see that as Christians, our pleasure comes from God, not what this world has to offer and not what our bodies have to offer. Our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, so we can't treat them like banquet halls or amusement parks or tools to achieve worldly pleasure. This is sacred ground and we cannot defile the temple like they defiled the temple thousands of years ago. So it sounds like I'm preaching to you, but honestly, this is what God has been convicting me about. So I've mainly been preaching to myself this whole video. I also wanted to make this video so that future me can look back and say, hey, don't forget what God was telling you. But at the same time, I know there are a lot of people out there that struggle with the battle between the pleasures of the kingdom and the pleasures of the world. So I hope this video helps you too. I'm going to be doing the 40 day Daniel fast again starting January 1st at the beginning of the year in 2022 and it will be a supernatural push towards a new lifestyle not a magic pill. If you want to do this fast with me that would be great. I'm probably going to make this a yearly fast so whoever wants to do it with me each year I think that would be an awesome way to start off the year and then let's stay accountable so we don't go back to the mud. Let's stick with a disciplined lifestyle. And if that means for some people not eating certain foods permanently, then so be it. Whatever God is convicting you about personally to stay sober minded and in line with God's strategy during these times, it is 100% worth it. If you are going to do the fast with me at the beginning of the year or whenever a good time is, I have a list of very helpful scriptures in the description box to help you, inspire you, and give you a deeper understanding of fasting. Also make sure to watch the first Daniel Fast video to give this video a little more context. I hope this video helped you 
and I will see you in the next one.